a few reflections on the fourth Sunday of Easter, which is also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. The title that I given to these reflections is Leading to Springs of Life-Giving Water. These days, we are flooded with the news of the bloody war in Ukraine, unleashed by its neighbor, Russia. The national economic crisis in our neighboring country, Sri Lanka, and unending communal hatred being spread by the loyalists and fanatics of the BJP supporters and its government and also state governments in India. It would be interesting to ask if St. Paul and St. Barnabas were around, what would have been their reaction as they go on their preaching trail? Which city they would have chosen as a base for their mission of saving work? The Acts of the Apostles says Iconium. That was the city that they preferred. It was the safest. Paul and Barnabas, even though they preached in Antioch in Pisidia, had trouble from the community and so had to leave for Iconium. The passage reads, The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit in that city of peace and tranquility. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 52. I have four points. The first one is God's strength in spite of failures. A lot of political game is going on here in Greek lands. We see first both Paul and Barnabas speaking with new converts to Judaism, but now followers of Paul's faith. And Paul tells them to remain faithful to their call of God. Then both Paul and Barnabas turn to old Jews and say to, say to them these words. It was necessary that the word of God was spoken to you first. But since you reject it and condemn yourself as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. Acts chapter 13 verse 46. Paul is demanding absolute obedience from them. In spite of many failures that Paul encounters, a great multitude of people joins his way. Now, turning to the Gentiles, because Paul and Barnabas seem to have associated too much and too long with people of old faith, now look into converting the Gentiles, who are in fact non-Jews. But the result is pathetic. In the beginning, these Gentiles liked apostles, and later on the Gentile influential ladies listened to the instigating new Jews to, over, to, to throw out both Paul and Barnabas from their territory. Somehow or the other, Paul and Barnabas' mission in Antioch was a failure. Their election manifesto seems to have failed to convince everybody, or perhaps their election strategy was not adequate to deal with the issues of Antioch. They lost people of the world faith, Gentiles, uh, but not Jew, but Jesus. They were not discouraged. They knew they were on the right path, as John C. Maxwell put it so well. Don't let your re real situation discourage you. Everyone who got where they are started where they were. Don't let your real situation discourage you. Everyone who got where they are started where they were. The second point, shepherding means being with the sheep 24-7. And the gospel of today speaks about the good shepherd. In very simple words and metaphors, Jesus speaks about his mission and the relationship that he has with God. By our baptism, we are marked as his flock. As a shepherd, Jesus wants to give his best to his sheep, and that is, we are his people. Shepherd knows his sheep and moreover knows, knows them by name. He speaks their language. They are accounted for and not numberless. They are not a part of the crowd. 
but they are very much part of the life of the shepherd. Moreover, the peoples of every land hear shepherd's voice and follow him. We are told we are not just part of the one crowd, but we are personally known by our shepherd. In fact, Jesus says that in spite of the danger surrounding us, no one can take us away from him. That means any threat to the sheep means a threat to the shepherd. So the shepherd takes care of the sheep and is even ready to lay down his life if any eventuality comes up in order to secure them. Jesus wins the confidence of the sheep. This idea is important to us in order to know the significance of Jesus in our lives. The last sentence from today's gospel tells who Jesus is. The Father and I are one. John chapter 10 verse 30. Jesus had taught his disciples the prayer of our Father. He had spoken several times about his Father. Even at the birth, the angel Gabriel had said to Joseph that he, he should name the child Emmanuel, which means God is with us. We are surrounded by different voices which catch our attention. It is easy to get, and get lost and confused in this noise. We are called to press for pause and create space in our families and communities to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd who speaks in prayer and the scriptures. The third point. Our intimacy with God flows through the person of Jesus. Now Jesus himself says, I and Father are one. The connection that he makes fills us with the faith that if we have experienced Jesus, then we have experienced God. This is the experience that fills the hearts and souls of Barnabas and Paul. This is the fire that keeps the fire of God's love burning in their hearts all through their life as missionaries and campaigners in winning people for Jesus' side. It also means they are ready to go anywhere, to the recently converted pagans of Judaism, or to the Jews with whom Paul and Barnabas shared their faith, or to the non-Jews or Gentiles who shared nothing in common. Even when these three groups of people refuse them, Still, they are on the way to preaching the gospel. What fills them is a strong desire to serve God, in whom they themselves converted, now, converted and now, through the Holy Spirit, are full of wisdom and healing power. To give Christ to them, to give the peace of risen Jesus. And John's revelation tells us the beauty of this faith that we share beyond the shores. He writes, I, John, had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, and worshipped him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or th thirst any more nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 to 17. These words radiate in today's psalm as well. The final point, the fourth one, following Christ means his mission becomes our mission. Our life is connected with what we believe and how we put that belief in practice. St. Cyril of Alexandria, one of the church fathers writes, by giving life, Christ shows that by nature he is life. He does not receive it from another but supplies it from his own resources. 
we may also see in the word life a reference to the Eucharist by means of which Christ implants in believers his own life through their sharing in his flesh according to the text he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Jesus invites us to share with him where we find ourselves today on this pilgrimage of life. Instead of trying to make our own ways, let us entrust ourselves to him and let him lead us along with the mountain passes and trails with the assurance that no one can take us out of his hand. Then, following Christ and filled with the Spirit, his mission becomes our mission to bring good news to the afflicted, proclaim liberty to the captives, sight to the blind, and let the oppressed go free, to establish justice and peace in our world. Jesus the Good Shepherd leads and we follow. May this Good Shepherd Sunday help us to walk the talk on this day. A few questions for our reflections. The first one, where do we find ourselves today on a journey to eternity? Are we looking forward to arriving there? The second, are we fearful of or hesitant about that goal of preaching our destiny that is God? Third, are we so burdened with the challenges of the present moment that talk, talk of that distant future seems to hollow. Final, the fourth one. Do you feel that the Lord is guiding you? Recall some of your experiences. Finally, let's conclude these reflections with a short prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world and our Good Shepherd, open my eyes to notice the significance of creation. Open my eyes so that I may always value and appreciate all who are part of my life. Open my eyes that I may be quick to notice when people are going through difficulties. Open my eyes so that I share your vision and see truly and deeply outside of myself. O oh God, be present with me always. Dwell within my heart. With your light and your spirit, guide my soul, my thoughts and all my actions. That I may teach your word. That your healing power may be in me and in your church. Thus I may follow your way in my life. I make this prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen.